Hello and welcome. I'm Bruce Oviagli, Chair of the ISC Program Committee. I'm here to talk about the HEDPOS trial with Dr. Craig Anderson. Dr. Anderson is Professor of Neurology at the George Institute for Global Health in Sydney, Australia. Congratulations, Craig, on another important trial addressing an important issue. Thank you very much. So, Craig, why did you decide to do this trial? Well, as you know, there's a lot of interest in collateral blood flow in the brain and uh, several studies uh, using transcranial Doppler and other methods have indicated that if you lie flat, you can increase blood flow into the hemisphere, cerebral perfusion and oxygenation quite considerably. And this may lead to improved uh, recovery from acute ischemic stroke. And in fact, uh, the guidelines are, are suggesting that this may be the approach and many stroke centres are adopting this as a standard practice uh, for patients um, who are receiving reperfusion therapy. But actually, the lying flat position is uh, the norm in low resource settings um, because they lack uh, mechanical modern uh, beds. And I've always wondered whether lying flat may increase the risk of aspiration pneumonia and compromised cardiorespiratory function as, as occurs anywhere. So conversely, the head up position may offer benefits in those with large acute ischemic stroke or intracerebral hemorrhage by reducing edema. And in fact, that's the recommendation for patients with uh, head injury or uh, requiring uh, assisted ventilation. So there's quite a lot of variation in practice around the world regarding head positioning. Some fierce advocates that lying flat is the best position, otherwise it's sitting up. And it's such a simple uh, technique that could be applied if it really is beneficial or offers harms, then this needs to be sorted out reliably and hence that was our mission uh, for the head post trial to uh, provide reliable evidence of the balance of benefits and risks of uh, either head position uh, that could be applied in a broad range of patients as early as possible after the onset of symptoms and continued for at least 24 hours in hospital. That's, that's great, Craig. So how did you go about addressing this question and what was the design of the study? Well, uh, it's a nursing intervention, so it has to be applied as part of a system of care, which is very complicated and involves um, strong cooperation from the nursing fraternity to help support the intervention um, from uh, the admission to hospital, the emergency department, through to the stroke unit or intensive care. So it requires a lot of cooperation. So the big uh, potential bias for such a study with individual randomization, the, the natural uh, approach to such clinical trials uh, is contamination. It's uh, very hard to separate the intervention from individual patients who may be nursed in a, a multi-centre bay. And also uh, the resources that we had available indicated that individual randomization uh, was not uh, possible. So it's the op optimal design as a cluster clinical trial, but again, a conventional parallel cluster assessment would inflate the sample size considerably to assess a modest treatment effect. So the cluster crossover, where we randomise clusters of patients within hospitals for separate phases, is the optimal design for this type of trial. Not only does it optimise our power calculations, but it controls for background of care because each hospital manages the patient in clusters of positioning against their standard background level of care. So it was a large sample size. Uh, we estimated that we would require almost 15,000 patients, but we did our power calculation based on acute, acute ischemic stroke because that's where the strongest evidence is for the flat positioning. Uh, we needed about 15,000 patients across 140 hospitals, mm -hmm. and that was actually overpowered because we did some very conservative assumptions around those power calculations. So the target for each centre was 70 patients per cluster, mm. but then they crossed over so the total was 140. We ended up with uh, just over 11,000 patients recruited from 114 hospitals in nine countries, but this was achieved over just 18 months, Amazing. which is a remarkable achievement and an indication not only of the importance of the question, the simplicity of the design, but also the commitment 
uh, of the investigators uh, to do the work for very uh, modest um, resourcing. Absolutely. So what did you find? Well, unfortunately, there was no difference mm. in the effects on the disability outcomes between either group. And we could not find a signal in any of the subgroups mm. by age, by region of recruitment, by severity, by time to intervention, or across the various categories of acute ischemic stroke, which is always a surprise because you enter in a clinical trial with a strong hypothesis that you believe would be achieved. But the other thing is there was no harms detected by either positioning. So this concern we have that lying flat may increase the risk of uh, aspiration pneumonia or cause hypoxia did not become evident in our trial. Um, but also we've shown that to evaluate simple nursing interventions on a, on a large scale is possible and this novel design we've used uh, without any flow on effect in, in uh, subsequent patients may be something that could be examined in future studies. Well, that's terrific and I, I do agree with you that um, this uh, informs future designs of studies of this nature. It's a really efficient way to do things. And being able to tap into the um, nurses the way you did, I think, was very impressive. One question I did have was, what do you think might have accounted for this neutral result? Is it possible that perhaps the patient population itself might have been either maybe they had strokes that were too mild or a certain stroke type seemed to predominate, perhaps? Yes, always in a clinical trial there is the potential selection bias and we tried to reduce this as far as we could by um, having a protocol that included consecutive patients for recruitment and all of our inclusion and exclusion criteria to be applied consistently across, across patients for either position. Um, but the protocol did indicate that the intervention was anticipated to be applied consistently, so it is likely that some patients with severe conditions or other comorbid conditions uh, were not included into the study. But as far as we can tell, there was no differential exclusion across those categories for each of the groups. Um, there is always a concern that the subpopulation were milder. We're so used to seeing high NIH stroke scales in our reperfusion trials, but the reality is most patients in our acute stroke units are mild and many of them present late after the onset of symptoms. And we think our trial is a reflection of uh, contemporary clinical practice in acute stroke trials uh, around the world. Our rates of SAEs were rather low. Uh, pneumonia rate was 13%, uh, 3 percent in both groups, 13 percent overall for SAEs. Again, as part of a clinical trial with very careful management of the patients, particularly regarding swallow assessment and feeding, those rates are probably lower than in uh, observational studies. Um, but the advantage of uh, our pragmatic design and the large sample sizes allowed us to very carefully look at subgroups and uh, we could not really get a signal of any benefits either way according to severity or time uh, or type of stroke. Um, but there's always, that's always subgroup analysis, you lack power in subgroups, there's a possibility that uh, a modest treatment effect in those groups were missed but you could argue that the, the modest treatment effect may not be clinically meaningful and we were interested in a, evaluating a policy rather than specific cherry picking particular patients. So um, as far as we can tell, the policy of specific head positioning does not appear relevant to improve patient outcomes in, uh, in stroke. What if any, Craig, should the next steps be in this area? I think uh, Nursing care, there's a lot of aspects of nursing care in that package that require evaluation. Mm. All of the complications associated with the acute disability of, of stroke need to be fully evaluated. The whole role of swallow assessment, feeding timing and approach to uh, feeding infection control more, more broadly need to be evaluated. 
and our study design does show that these type of evaluations can be evaluated on a large scale for a plausible, important, modest treatment effect. Um, which direction to go into now? Some people may feel that there's still some room to look at positioning in particular subgroups specifically around pathophysiological mechanisms. Um, but you're always concerned around evaluations on surrogate endpoints in terms of its clinically relevance to clinical outcomes. Uh, the whole uh, question of mobilisation uh, is still open for question uh, based on uh, the AVERT trial that was uh, published a few years back um, and the whole role of uh, how we organise nursing care uh, itself uh, to give the best outcomes do, do uh, require uh, further assessment. So I think looking at the complex management of stroke patients, the ancillary care uh, using a cluster uh, trial design uh, is uh, also as important as a more targeted pharmaceutical approach in acute stroke. Well, Craig, congratulations again on a very important trial, efficiently designed, large and completed in timely fashion. And thank all of you for paying attention to this particular video. Thank you.